Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to lead you through how I built this, what I call a footer stem wall foundation. And the footer stem wall is one of my favorite styles of foundations. It's very similar to the traditional rubble trench in a lot of ways. Um, this version is a little bit more um, robust structurally, and you can easily get permits for some of the advantages. Um, in this case, I'm using the footer stem wall for this outdoor half courtyard wall behind my house. And so I'm going to lead you through step by step what I did to build this. And the footer stem wall foundation can be translated to pretty much any kind of building or structure. So let me go through the video and I'll comment as it goes. Here are some photos I took at the very beginning. You can see I dug out the trench. Uh, I dug below frost line and uh, rented a jackhammer, had to get a, um, a lot of stones knocked out of there. You can see there's a lot of work getting the stone um, out of the hole. This one stone here was positioned in the soil to where it took me about six hours just to get this one stone out. Luckily, most of the others weren't that difficult. But you gotta do whatever it takes to get your trench cleared. And in a second here, you'll see the cleared trench once the trench is clear, then you can lay your footer. And it's quite a muddy mess. It's a lot of work. You can see all the stone. I got all that stone out. And then here's the cleared trench. So this is kind of the stage one complete. It's ready to put the footer in. You can see the drainage trench I dug there as well, for water. So I'm down inside the foundation this trench right year. now, and this is where I'm going to lay the footer next, a concrete footer. Um, and this is all for the new cob wall that I'm constructing here. So uh, the footer uh, took me a month to dig this out by hand because of the location. I couldn't get a machine back here, even if I wanted to. Um, so it was a lot of work to get this trench dug and um, cut to the right measurements. So, yeah, I got the right width. Um, in this case, it was 27 inches in width to allow for the 24 inch footer plus three inches for the form boards. And then it's actually a little bit wider just so I have a little bit of space to work. Um, I really wanna show you more of the depth measurements. So, um, where I'm at here, in Tennessee, the frost line depth is 18 inches. So I dug this foundation trench for the footer. Um, it varies slightly across the length, but it's about 20 inches in depth, uh, plus or minus. Um, it'll all come out accurate in the end when I lay the footer. But the purpose of that was to at least get the bottom of the footer set beneath the frost line. So any water that uh, does accumulate in the bottom of the foundation trench hole, it's gonna be below the frost line so that it won't freeze and cause frost heave or foundation shifting. So I cut this depth um, that deep so I could get the footer below the frost line. So I've accounted for about six inches at the very bottom, that's the concrete footer, and it's beneath the frost line. And then the rest of the way up will be the stem wall. And then that stem wall is going to extend up a certain amount, at least a foot above grade, um, all the way across this wall. And you'll see in the back of me, there's actually uh, several feet of dirt um, the uh, exterior sides of this wall. So the stem wall is actually gonna go up really high in this back corner. So um, anywhere that there's ground, um, the stem wall is gonna be above that ground level. And you'll see as things come together. But uh, I just wanted to kind of lay out my ideas there for you. So now, um, I put the form boards in to pour the footer. 
and you're making sure everything's level. It's a lot of work. I mean, it's, the carpentry, putting these together is not hard, but you have to make sure everything's level. For example, the corner on this side of the wall has to be level to the corner on the opposite side of the wall. So something like a rotary laser level is really helpful here. So all these points need to be level with each other. I put the rebar in, the bricks are to raise this rebar. In this case, um, I had two horizontal rebars down at that thick end. And this was a lot of concrete. It was about 180 bags, 50 pound bags in the end. Um, it was pretty easy. I poured it all by myself in a day. Um, I could just dump it right out of the mixer into the form. So a few moments later. Yep. So Next I'm year. finally back. I've got the concrete footer poured. It's actually been a year since I did that. That was last April. Now fast forward, it's March of the next year. Uh, so nearly a year. This has been a really big project. Um, I've done everything by hand too. I couldn't get an ex excavator back here and I couldn't get a concrete truck back here. So I've dug all this footer out by hand. I poured and uh, mixed all the concrete by hand. And honestly, it wasn't that bad, but um, it's a big project to do alone and by hand. So that's why it's taking so long. And I've had a lot of other projects this year. But anyway, the concrete footer is all in place and ready to go. So the next step is to build the brick stem wall. And the system that I like to use, the style anyway, is I'll build two layers of brick and then the inside is empty and so I fill that with concrete creating a solid monolithic stem wall. So again to reiterate I dug this hole 18 inches below grade because that's where the frost line is and in this case thinking about it it's a little overkill probably because this is just an outside wall um, but it's better not to take chances. And so I dug it down to the frost line. At least, um, at least go to the frost line, but better to go below the frost line. And so the very bottom of the concrete um, is touching the frost line or should be under the frost line. Uh, now I've been keeping an eye on drainage here the whole year and I haven't had any uh, water build up. There's been a little bit in this back corner. I actually just sprayed all this water in here So that's why you see so much water um, But it does drain out of here quite well even um, It's never even been close to rising above over um, The concrete So I'm not really worried about any frost heave with this building to be quite honest and I'm considering not even putting in any uh, perforated drainage pipes because I think that's just too much overkill for this. I was gonna put in a perforated drainage pipe along this back edge here in case the water would rise, it would channel that water out and away, but I just haven't seen any water rise uh, nearly high enough to call for such a thing. So basically all I'm gonna do is Fill in the edges with um, gravel, uh, three quarter inch gravel, and uh, basically just to fill in the edges instead of using dirt. Uh, one thing, I'm also not going to use any kind of uh, filter fabric along the edge of the trench because with the kind of soil I have here, the clay actually clogs up that filter fabric or that landscaping paper. And so water actually can't even get into the trench. So if you're doing a rubble trench, for example, and you have very clay rich soil, I usually don't recommend actually lining the trench with that filter fabric because it just prevents water from even draining into the trench and away from the building. So um, I'm gonna do the layout next. All that requires for me is just measuring in where the uh, 
the brick stem wall is going to go. This wall is going to be 18 inches wide. And so I'll uh, measure in for all the corners first. And I'm going to lay all the brick in all the corners first. And then fill in all the middle with brick. And you'll see kind of the process I do there. It's very standard brick work. Um, so let's see. I'll, I'll measure in a couple inches on each side, figure out exactly the corner where the bricks start, and I'll do that for every corner and then start the brick. So now you can see I've marked all the corners where the bricks will start. So I just measured in three inches and then um, in this case, it was seven inches off the very end, but um, three inches on both sides. That leaves 18 inches for the actual wall. And then I've done that for all the corners. So you'll see here, I've got the boundaries set for everything. And I'll lay my first bricks in these corners. So I laid the corners. This is the first thing you do with brickwork is initially lay the corners out. And these walls will go much taller than this in this case, actually. Uh, but I started off with six bricks in height. And this is the stem wall. So this is what your walls will set on. Uh, no matter what kind of wall it is, these stem walls are great for any kind of earth wall, cob, adobe, rammed earth. Also great for straw bale, straw clay, hempcrete, or even conventional. So here you see I filled in with concrete in the middle. Um, let's see, there's different options. You can fill in the middle of your brick form with basically um, compacted gravel with a little bit of Portland cement, kind of how you can do rammed earth walls that way. Um, that's a more economical way to do it rather than using pure concrete. Just use um, crusher run gravel with about 10 to 15% Portland cement by weight. And you're gonna save a lot of money that way, but again, it is gonna be more work. You could, if you're really on the more uh, uh, a lower budget, you could just fill this with gravel, compacted gravel. That would save you a lot of money. It would take a, a little bit of time to compact it all in there, but uh, that would be the cheapest way to fill your stem wall foundations. I don't really recommend it that way, um, but some people don't want to use so much concrete, which I understand. Um, filling it with concrete is the most... Uh, robust structural way to do this, but on the more natural or economical side, you can just fill the middle with either compacted gravel or a mixture of gravel and cement and compacted. That will save you a lot of money. Uh, probably will take you quite a bit more time though. But this is the stem wall. So you see down here, this is the footer, and then this is the stem wall, which rises above grade. And that's what your wall's set on. So here is the first finished section of the stem wall. And we're going to be putting the cob walls right on top of this in another couple of weeks here during the workshop. And then I'll be continuing to build the stem wall up way over here. And then I'll have a brick arch doorway here. So this is an ongoing project. I'll keep you updated. But that's essentially how you do a footer stem wall foundation. And these foundations here is a last at least a thousand years. So 
they'll last probably longer than whatever kind of wall you put on top of it. Thanks for watching the video. And if you want to see this foundation in person, and if you want to participate in building the cob walls on top of this foundation, I have several upcoming workshops at this location, the spring and summer here at my place. This is the project we're working on. So you're going to see all of this. You're going to see um, a couple of my buildings here, plus this project we're doing, plus potential field trips. And so I have April, May, June, and July up for registration as of now. I'll have more in the fall too. So I will, I'll be teaching you every main type of foundation at all these workshops. Plus I have live examples here on site of every single kind of foundation. I really put a lot of work into my foundations because they're crucial to the longevity of your building. And foundations get skipped over way too often in workshops and natural building courses. So we really focus in on foundations a lot in my classes. And we're going to cover every component and aspect of building your own cob house, natural house, whatever material and method that you want to use. The courses are very comprehensive. That's why I call them cob and straw because they cover all earth building materials and all natural fiber building materials. Okay, so if you can't make it to a class this year, I also have my new online video course completely updated. This is a um, compilation of my whole career in building and natural building, all condensed into this course. So covers everything. That's for direct download. I also have my new Natural Building Academy, which includes the video course as well, but you get even more in here. You get the course, plus you get the live recordings of the hands-on workshops we're doing. Plus, this is just a really great way to get one-on-one -on -one consultations with me and to work on your own personal projects together with me. So I have tons of offerings here. I really encourage you to learn how to build your own house. You can build much, much better quality for much, much lower price doing your own house build. It's completely worth it if you can do it. So again, there's so much available here on my website, thiscobhouse.com. Thanks for watching the video. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you soon.